Well, this message and series is at www.lifegatechurch.com along with a thousand other messages and hundreds of other series. So you're encouraged to go and find whatever you want to study right there. Not just me, but many, many other are on there as speaker as well. And also, if you're looking for us on Facebook, it's LifeGate, two words, LifeGate Church. Type that in and you'll find us. We're going to be talking today uh, about the series that we began last week, and it's Smile, <laughs> Staying Positive Win. And of course, the win is when things are happening negatively in your life. And I hope today that I'm able to communicate you the necessity of keeping a positive attitude. And so today what we're going to be talking about and looking at is smile, staying positive when you are negative about yourself. <laughs> and we all get negative about ourselves sometimes. And what I really want us to learn today is the problem isn't out there. The problem isn't with other people. Now, I know we think that is the problem, and we have people in our lives that definitely must be the problem, but what I really want you to see today is most likely the problem is in here, is inside you. And so this is what I'm looking for. See, we all struggle. We all should have a positive opinion and attitude about ourselves, but we don't. Some of us really struggle with self-worth. We struggle there. And when we look on the inside, when we look at ourselves on the inside, what we see is that we're inferior, that we don't like ourselves, so nobody else could like us because we don't like our own selves. We, we see ourselves that, that we, uh, we have nothing to give to society. We have no real talents to give. We've made too many mistakes for people to want us even around. This is how we feel about ourselves. We find some physical default or defect that, that we have, and we focus on that and think that repels people away. We're raised on the wrong side of the tracks, you know. We had a, a divorced family. We come out of it. We, uh, our parents were ignorant or weren't, weren't not educated, or they had, they had dependencies on, on their own. They were addicts of some sort, and we had bad parenting. So w all of these things begin to really affect us on the inside and develop with in us a negative attitude. And so there's a video that's running constantly. It loops inside of us and it keeps showing us and telling us how inferior we are. It continuously runs. It shows us how unattractive we are. It shows us how dumb we are. It continuously works and, and, and tells us that, that we can't be positive about anything. We're nothing but failures. We can compliment other people but we can't compliment ourselves. And so I want you to see that this is not how you're created to think. This is totally contrary to what Jesus told us and how Jesus told us to think about ourselves. One day uh, a person came to Jesus and said, what is the greatest commandment? Now we're very familiar with what Jesus responded, but I wanna really emphasize one thought here. And in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37, and through 39, it says this, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest what? Commandment. It, it is a commandment, okay? And the second, the second commandment, this is a commandment. The second is like it. We get this one. We, we don't get this one. We get the first one. We don't, we, this one is where I'm really saying we're struggling with. Love your neighbors as what? As what? Are you commanded to love yourself? You say, I want us to see that it's a command of God. You'll never be able to love people properly until you love yourself properly. If you don't love yourself in a healthy way, you will never love people the way you should love them. It's dependent upon how you see yourself on the inside. The problem is inside out, not outside in. And what we've got to do is learn how to fix ourselves on the inside. We've all made mistakes. Every single one of us have faults and failures, every single one of us. But God did not create you to go around in your life being negative about yourself. That's not why you're created. You are an amazing creature. You, yeah, you are. And this is how the Lord really wants each and every one of us to see ourselves. Now, I want you to see this. I want you to hear this, what I'm about to say. The, the most, let me start this one. The opinion that you have 
about yourself is the most valuable and most important opinion you'll ever have of anyone. I'm going to say that again. The opinion that you have about yourself is the most valuable and important opinion that you'll ever have of anyone. It all is going to begin here of what you think about people and what people think about you. It begins here, how you feel about people and how people feel about you. See, if you go through life feeling like you're inferior, that no one likes you and you don't love yourself, so how can anyone love you? If you go through your life feeling that you have nothing to offer, you have really no, no talents to give anyone, that you've made too many mistakes in life, nobody wants you around. If you go through life feeling like you're physically uh, incapable of being accepted, you know, there's something about you that's physically repulsive to people. If you go through that feeling like you've been raised on the wrong side of the tracks and that you, you had bad parenting, if that's, if that's how you go through life, if, if you go through life feeling like you're a failure, if you go through life feeling that, 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 that you have, you, you're just, uh, you, you know, un, un, unappreciated, that, that, that nothing about you is pretty or nice or, or wantable, you know, th then this is what you're going to be projecting. You're constantly conveying to people this thought. And what you convey, what you see and how you feel about yourself on the inside is what you become. <clears throat> let, me, let me make sure we get this. What you feel and what you see yourself being on the inside is what you become. Let me make sure now we, we understand what I'm saying. If you are sad on the inside, something's broken your heart and makes you cry, right? you become sad. It, what you're feeling, you become. What you're feeling on the inside is what you become externally. Your, your countenance falls, you cry, all right, you get angry. You get angry on the inside. Does it come on the outside? You become angry. It comes out of your mouth. You yell, you scream, you punch things, you hit things, you say mean things. It, you become angry. But if you flip this over and on the inside you're happy, you're positive, it comes out. You become happy. You become positive. You, you, what's going on on the inside is related to the outside. And you become whatever it is that you're feeling. If you become happy, you're laughing, it's coming out, your, your countenance is lifted, people want to be around you, you attract people to you because they want to be happy too. But when you're angry, you push people away, don't we? Nobody wants to be around you when you're angry, right? Now, nobody wants to be around me when I'm angry, I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I, and, and this is what I'm wanting you to say. So you can be physically the most attractive person in the world. But if you see yourself on the inside as unattractive, you push people away. You unattract them. When you see yourself as pretty on the inside and positive on the inside, well, you attract people to you because you are attractive. You become what you feel on the inside. The problem is not out there. The problem is in here. How I see myself starts everything. And this is so vital that we see. See, it begins inside of you. The quality of life that you live, I'm going to show you this in just a second. The quality of life that you experience is determined by how you see yourself, the opinion that you see about yourself. How people see you. This is vital. How people see you. And how people feel about you is determined by the opinion that you have of yourself. <clears throat> if most of us, if many of us could just correct this one thing in our life and stop beating ourselves up because of the mistakes that we made, stop focusing on the physical defects that we have or we think we have, if we could just stop doing those things, we could immediately go to the next level of life. We could go to a higher dimension of life. And I'm about to show you this in the scriptures. See, what we do, and I want you to focus on what I'm about to say. What we do when we are negative about ourselves on the inside is we block, we stop the blessings of God. We stop life right there. Now, there's an interesting story that's going to verify what I just said. In fact, what I've just said was built upon what I'm about to show you in the scriptures. The, uh, the people of God had been led out of bondage by Moses from Egypt. It was Exodus from Egypt. They were taken and led to uh, Mount Sinai where they received the law of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, including the ten. And eventually they come to the Jordan River. 
and they're about to cross over. God has them a land of promise, a land that's flowing with milk and honey, a land where they could enjoy life and go to the next level. So what Moses does is he sends in 12 spies. He says, I want you to go into the land, and I want you to spy it out for 40 days, and I want you to come back and give us a report. What I'm about to read to you is what 10 of the 12 said. 80% of us struggle with what I'm talking about today. 10 of the 12 come back with a very negative report, which stopped their lives right there. Let me show you this. Matthew, oops, nope, didn't write that one. <laughs> Numbers 13, 13, 33. Numbers 13, 33. We saw the Nephilim. Now, Nephilim are, are demonic giants, were and are <laughs> demonic giants. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anna come from the Nephilim. Now, here's what it says. We seemed like grasshoppers, finish that for me, in, 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 in whose eyes? Our eyes. See, it wasn't the giants that said, you look like grasshoppers. We look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Emphasis, our own eyes. So, or, and we look the same to them. They saw, the giants saw them that way because that's how they saw themselves. People see you and feel about you the way you see and feel about yourself. And this one mentality, this grasshopper mentality, this grasshopper thinking stopped an entire generation. It stopped them, their families, and everyone from going on into the next level that God had for them. It stopped the blessings. All but two came back with a negative report. All but two, their families and the entire generation had this kind of thinking, and they died. Their carcasses fell in the wilderness. And as far as they got was where they were. They ate nothing more than manna for the rest of their lives. They drank nothing more than water out of a rock. And they died in that state, never crossing over to the promises of God, never going to a higher level. Caleb and Joshua were the only ones of the, of the 12 who went in. Here's what I want you to hear. The quality of life you live is directly determined by how you see yourself, how you feel about yourself, and the opinion you have of yourself. You can go no further if you don't see yourself and love yourself. Now, Caleb and Joshua went in because they had a different thinking, a different mentality. They didn't think like that. They didn't have grasshopper thinking. Here's how they thought. And, and I'm reading this from the King James Version. I just like how it says it. And it says in Numbers 13, 30, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once. Let's just do it now. And possess it. Come on, let's, let's go. Let's, let's get it done. For we are well able. We are equipped. We are capable. We are well able to overcome it. See, this is the thinking that God wants us to all have. We can do, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. All things are possible. See, this is the thinking that God wants you to have. He doesn't want you to have grasshopper thinking. And then uh, reading in the next chapter, this, this discussion, this debate is still going on, this squabble. And this is what Joshua and Caleb were saying. In, in Numbers 14, 9, it says, only rebel not. Only what? See, this kind of thinking is rebellion. This grasshopper thinking is rebellion against the thinking God wants us to have. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear. Neither what? Neither fear. See, whenever we have a bad opinion of ourselves, whenever we don't love ourselves, when we have a bad opinion or a negative opinion about us, we, there's something we fear. As people, something about life, there's something we fear. And I'm going to emphasize this a little bit more later, but fear is the opposite of faith. What fear does is deactivate the power of God in your life. Fear deactivates your faith. So, so neither fear ye the people of the land. Don't fear those giants. Neither fear the people of the land, for they are, what? Bread for us. We can eat them alive. They can't stop us. We're the people of God. And it all comes from loving yourself. This is what the Lord wants us to understand and, and, and grasp. See, the problem then is the same problem as today. We have grasshopper thinking 
So many of the disciples and followers of Jesus Christ are hopping along behind him like grasshoppers. And he wants us to go on into the next level. He wants to take us on into the next abundance of life. And, and we say, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. We, 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 we're just we're grasshoppers. We can't do that. See, if, if, if that's how we think, if we have this mentality that, that I'm inferior, that I'm dumb, if we have this mentality that I was raised on the wrong side of the tracks, that I've made too many mistakes in my life, you know, I, I can't, I don't have anything to offer. If, if, this is, if we go through life like that, we're broadcasting that. We're, we're broadcasting those kinds of things. And what we've got to do, what we've got to learn how to do, is change the video that's running in our minds. Change the soundtrack. We've got to change this thing. See, so many of us are still watching from a VCR player. And we need to upgrade at least to a DVD. And what we really need to do is stop watching FLV files and move up to MP4s. Now, I know some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but you ought to. <laughs> because you need a higher, we need to go HD. You got that, right? We need to go high definition. We need to see it better. We need to see life in high definition, not low definition. <laughs> we, we need to upgrade how we see things. See, see, all of us have had failures and made mistakes in life. And, and somewhere along the way, somebody's pushed you down. But that doesn't mean you're a grasshopper. <laughs> Seven times a day. See, this is what the Lord is wanting us to understand. Listen, if you want the blessings of God in your life, if you want to go on to the next level in your life, what you've got to do is start saying about yourself what God says about you. You've got to see yourself the way God sees you. you listen, <laughs> you are well able. You are equipped. <laughs> you are capable. You are enabled. You, you have equipment to do this. You've got the armor of God in your life. You, you've got everything you need. You have the favor of God in your life. You've got highly favored. You've got everything that you possibly could ever want to have a successful, abundant life. Except you've got to get rid of the grasshopper thinking. You've got to get rid of that kind of a mentality. God wants you to go on. He doesn't want you wandering around in the wilderness for the rest of your life. He doesn't want this to be as far as you go in life. He, he wants you to cross over to the next realm where there's a land that's flowing with milk and honey. He wants more for you than what you have right now. You can stop right now and die in the wilderness. Or you can change the way you think, change the way you see about yourself, yourself and cross over to the next dimension of life. Now, I, I watch people go round and round in life, like they went round and round in the wilderness for 40, 40 years, the whole generation passed away. I watch people do that, and they wonder why they don't have the blessings of God like others do. Well, this is why. You see, when you, when you have a low mentality of yourself, a low thinking about yourself, a low opinion of yourself, when you see yourself in a negative way, what you've done is you have deactivated your faith, because God says you're special. God says you can do anything, and you're totally rebelling against what God has said about you. And what you've done is you've deactivated your faith because of fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. There's something you fear. It's a giant to you. But you're well able. You're equipped. You're capable. You can eat that giant alive. Now, <laughs> uh, years ago, years ago, we, uh, we went to a men's retreat. And several of us from our church went. I think we probably had the biggest crowd there uh, at the churches. Four churches that were involved in it. We, uh, we went, and the different pastors spoke at the different sessions. And I was scheduled to speak the very last session on Saturday before we left. <laughs> and so... And so uh, so we go, and, and, and so we're ready to go. It's been a good, it's been a good, a good men's conference. We, we had a good time. We learned some good things and made some acquaintances. And, well, I was, we had praise and worship that morning, and I was about to speak. I thought it was. And, well, they let this other guy come out and speak. He wasn't, I don't know who that guy is, was, nothing. I didn't know anything about him, but he comes out. I think he was the devil. But anyway, he comes out. LAUGHTER <laughs> And bless his heart, he had been addicted to pornography. <laughs> Some of you didn't hear what I just said. He had been addicted to pornography. And he wanted to say something. And so he began talking about it. And, you know, it wasn't particularly uplifting to me. <laughs> and then he started saying these kinds of things, which really erupted me. He said, uh, 
He said, I'm nothing but a maggot. Men are nothing but maggots. And I said, whoa, on the inside, this thing come up. I'm not a maggot. And I, <laughs> I'm not a maggot, and I don't hang out with maggots. You know? <laughs> and he keeps talking. And, and then he says, he says, uh, he says, yeah, he says, you're nothing but a worm, a, a scumball of worms. You know, that's all men are. And I said, I'm not a scumball of worms. And the people I hang out with are not worms. You know, he goes, you know, like, like you're nothing but a, a fur ball hacked up by your cat. Now, what? You know, and, and so all the guys are turning and looking at me. And they know that I'm about to follow this thing. <laughs> and I am aggravated on the inside. I mean, this has gotten me, hey, this has gotten me uptight, buddy. And I am thinking, will you shut up and so I can talk? You know, and finally he did. They introduced me. And immediately what I did is I walked in. I said, I just need everybody to stand up and take your Bible. If you've got your Bible, you take your Bible and hold it up over your head. Because this is what says what we are. This is what tells us who we are. And I want you to holler out and repeat after me as I say these things. You repeat them after me. And I began to yell out, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am a child of the Most High God. I am seating in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I am not a maggot. <laughs> and, and I went on. I said, I am joint heirs with Christ Jesus. I am, I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. I am not a furball hacked up by my cat. In fact, I don't even have a cat. I am, <laughs> I am not a worm ball. I am, I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. I am a masterpiece. I have the favor of God on my life. And I kept on yelling, and they got louder and louder. And when I was done, that thing had left. That, that scumball thing, that maggot thing, that, that, that grasshopper thing was gone. <laughs> now, listen. Now, <laughs> now, now, I want you to hear me say this because, see, humility is not cutting yourself down. That's not humility. God gets no honor by you cutting yourself down and being negative about yourself. That's not honoring God. If you want to honor God and bring a smile to God's face, you start claiming and declaring who you really are in Christ Jesus, in his son who died for you. You are not a maggot. You are, you are not a scumball. You are not a grasshopper. If you want God to open doors for you, if you want the favor of God in your life, if you want to cross over to the next dimension, you want to go into your promised land, you want to experience the abundant life that God has planned for you, you start declaring who you are and what you are in Christ Jesus. God will start opening doors for you. Because you're, you're not a grasshopper. Let me tell you something. You are a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece created in Jesus. Whoa. You know, we have this tendency, don't we? We all do it. We get up in the mornings. We go look in the mirror. <laughs> and we focus on the negatives. You know, a new wrinkle. You know, a new age spot. Uh, the belly. You know, we always look at our, at our belly. Uh, we look at the belly, or we look at our hair, if we have any hair. We, we look at our hair. You know, we, but we, what my point is that we start our days looking at negatives. We start our day focusing on the negatives. Here's what we should do. We should walk into that mirror and say, look at that good-looking person. That person is successful. <laughs> That person is going to do something great today. That person is going to do something good today. That person is going to bless somebody today. <laughs> but we should start on the positive side. You know, rather than looking at negative, and then we can go out thinking about what we're going to accomplish today and what we're going to be successful to, rather than focusing on the negatives to start with. If you, you know, this is just what we should do. We, we should think of the first thing we should think about is the goodness of God. <laughs> you know, God's done something good for you. Right? right? But there's something you can do gooder, and I'm, I'm doing this for a, on purpose. There's something you can do better than anyone else you know. Nearly anyone else you know. There's something you excel in. There's something you're an expert in. And this is where God has blessed you. Focus on that. Focus on how you've made people happy. Focus on how you've blessed somebody. Think about your good friends. Everything, think about good things in your life. And if you'll think about and focus on the good things in your life, I'm telling you, things are going to become good in your life. 
So I'll tell you this. The best gift that you can give to this world is a positive you. The best gift that you can give to this world while you're here is a positive you. If you're positive, you're happy. <laughs> and if you're happy, you're confident. And if you're confident, you're secure. And if you're secure, you're going to be hopeful. And when people get around you, you rub off on them. They become confident. They become positive because you're positive. You, you, you're, you're, you're imparting into them. They become happy. They become confident. They become secure. And they become hopeful because of you. That's the gift you gave them. The best gift that you can give to the world while you're here is a positive view. Don't say negative things about yourself. No matter how frustrated you get with yourself, how angry you get with yourself, and we all do. I get so angry with me sometimes. But even if you think negative things, don't say them. At least stop it there. At least don't say it. Your words have power, and they will come back on you. Your words have creative power. Don't say it. Have you ever been around people that did that, though? They were always negative, not just about themselves, but anybody, anything. You know, they would say things like, I can't do anything right. I'm just a big mess up. I'm so stupid. I'm dumb. Look at me. Everything I touch, I mess up. What have they just done? They have become what they have felt and see themselves as doing. And what they're really saying is, God, when you created me, you messed up. God, when you created me, you did a bad thing. You messed up. No, God's never messed up in creation. God made you special. He made you a masterpiece. There is no one else like you in this that ever has lived and will ever live. You're a masterpiece of God. When's the last time you complimented yourself? You know, so people have, have such trouble here. <laughs> uh, you know, they can compliment everybody else. They say, you look nice, or, or, or you know, you did a great job. But when they come to complimenting themselves, they, they just, they can't even fathom doing that. It's like, what? Compliment myself? Well, see, I don't have that problem. <laughs> 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 my wife tells me she says when you were young you're worse than you are now but you've always been full of yourself you know? <laughs> and, and you know and, and I will I, you know, I, see sometimes I'm good but sometimes I am really good sometimes I am very good <laughs> Jim Kittle asked me nearly every Sunday, he says, well, have you got another life-changing message for us this Sunday today? And I always say, well, yeah, they're all life-changing. All of them are good. But some of them are really good. Some of them, right? I'll be writing a lesson. I'll be writing a sermon out. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll type away, and I'll, I'll write something that's just, to me, amazing. Wow, you know. And I will say it out loud. Delbert, wow, that was great. That was great. <laughs> you see, I have this strange philosophy about myself. See, I think everybody loves me. <laughs> and I feel sorry for those that don't, you know. I, I, I think, see, I think everybody should want to come and hear me teach and preach. I think everybody should want to get my involvement into, into questions and biblical things that they have. I, I think that's how everybody is. Now, I'm wise enough to know it's not that way, and I feel sorry for those that don't feel that way. I feel, I feel like they're really missing something in life. But see, I, I guess I am full of myself. But so is God, because this is what God says. God says, sometimes I'm good, I'm always good, but sometimes I'm very good. I want to show you this in the scriptures. It's in, uh, it's in creation. In the book of Genesis, first, very first chapter. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1 and verse 4 says this. God saw that the light was good. So this is the first day of creation. And God says, look what I did. That's good. See, God applauds himself. God complimented himself. I did good today. 
I know that's poor English. I understand that it should be well. I did well today. But, and, and when I wrote all of this, my, uh, my grammar checker was going crazy. But, but, it, <laughs> but, but I'm wanting to make a point. I, I did good today, God said. And in and, and, and verse 10, it says this. God called the dry ground land and, and gathered the waters. And he called seas. And God saw that it was what? It was it's good. I did good today. Now, he's not focusing on what he didn't get done. He's focusing on what he did good. In the, verse 12, it says this, The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit and seed in, in, in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was, it was good. I did good today. I'm celebrating what I did today. Genesis 1.18, He governed the day and the night, and he separated light from darkness, and God saw that it was good. <laughs> Every day, he's celebrating what he did good that day. In verse 21, it says this, So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living and moving thing with which the waters teemed according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 25 says, God, God made the wild animals according to their kinds, he, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Man, I've done good every day. I've, I've done something good every day. And then in verse 31, God saw all that he had made and it was see God is good all the time but sometimes he is very good I want you to know this you're good all the time even though there's chaos but sometimes you're very good it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day <laughs> see when God did something good he said so <laughs> He, he complimented himself. And every day he celebrated what he did good. Not what he didn't get done. Not what he didn't finish. But what he had done good. And so many of us, so, so many of you, especially you eagle temperaments, you, you focus on what you didn't get done or what wasn't finished rather than what was finished. Right? See, I, I, I like to get it about 90% done and I'm good. <laughs> But that's not good enough for my wife. My wife wants it perfect all the way, all the time. And she's focusing on the 10% I didn't get done. And I'm focusing on the 90% I did. See, and, the, and, and, and this is how God's wired you because he wants things finished up and made perfect. I'm not putting that down. But what you've got to celebrate and what you've got to concentrate on is what you did good. That's what God wants you to think about and focus on and celebrate every day. When you go to bed at night, you need to look back at not what you didn't get accomplished, not what you failed at doing, but what you did good. And say, I did good today. <laughs> and I want, to see, I want you to see an amazing truth here in, in this. Uh, see, the first day that God said it was good, he wasn't even close to being finished. It wasn't finished. It wasn't perfect. All he had done was turn the lights on, I guess, so he could see what he wanted to do for the rest of the days. But it was still chaotic. All he had done was turn the lights on. It was still chaotic, but that didn't mean it wasn't good. See, here's what, here's what I want us to get. In your life, there's chaotic things. That doesn't mean you're you're not good. In your life, there are things going on that you're working on. You're not finished with them yet. They're not perfected yet. But that doesn't mean it's not good. You may not have the house of your dreams yet, but you have a house. You, you, you have a place to live. You have shelter over your head. You're not out on the streets. You've got food. You've done good. You may not have the vehicle that you want to drive yet, you have one that you really want, but if you've got a vehicle, you've done good. Do you realize what percentile that puts you in in the population of the world? You're in the upper 5% if you own a vehicle. You've done good. You may not have the occupation that you want yet. Well, the occupation that you have may be chaotic, but you have an occupation. If you have an occupation, you've done good. You can prepare and work for the occupation that you want, but it's good. It's all good. And our lives should be looked at this way. Maybe you're struggling with an addiction and have been struggled with it for years and years and years. Well, how do you look at that? Well, haven't you made some improvement from last year? See, if you've made some improvement from last year, 
then you've done good. It's still chaotic, but it doesn't mean that it's not good. And what God wants all of us to look at it all in our lives is that, is that it's good. We're good, but sometimes we're very good. God is good all the time, but sometimes we're very good. See, what we do is we, when we look at ourselves in a negative way, we push away the blessings of God, and we push away God. And God doesn't want that. He wants us to embrace him. He wants us to see us the way we really are, how he sees us. It's from the inside out. The problem is on the inside. Where each and every one of us really need to work is on the inside. If you work on the inside, your life will change. You're going to go to the next level. You need to work on the inside because Jesus said, you can't properly love people if you don't properly love yourself. Jesus said, and related it to us this way, you got to love yourself or you can't love people. See, if you don't love yourself the way you should, in a healthy way, you'll never love people the way you should love people. It all begins in here. It all begins in here. See, the opinion that you have about yourself is the most valuable, most important opinion that you'll ever have about anyone because this is where it begins. This is where it begins. This is what dictates how people feel about you and how people feel about you, how, how people feel about you and how people see you. How you see yourself, how you feel about yourself determines the quality of life that you're going to enjoy and experience. You're not a grasshopper. You're not a maggot. You're not a furball hacked up by your cat. You are a child of the living God. You are seating right now. You're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made, even if you're a man. <laughs> the greatest gift that you're going to give to this world is a positive view. You can make people happy. You can make people positive. You can make people feel like they're, they're, they're secure. You, you, you can make people celebrate their lives. You can give people hope. Sometimes you're good. Sometimes you're very good. Some things in your life are chaotic. But it doesn't mean they're not good. Very good is coming. It's on its way. But celebrate the good along the way. If you will smile, staying positive, your life is going to change, even if you want to be negative. If you'll stay positive about your life, what's going to happen is you're going to cross over to the very next dimension of life. You're going to go higher to another level of life. And you're going to defeat the giants that are facing you. They are but meat to you. You will eat them alive if you see yourself the way you should see yourself. How many believe this? Do you believe this? If you believe that you need to work on your positive, and if you could become positive, your life would improve, would you raise your hand and give God a shout? Yeah! There we go. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you.